Uh, I'll be home soon. I'll be Keon. I love my family. That's all you got to say. These defendants are in court for committing crimes and in some cases the most gruesome acts one can imagine. But that also ends up coming along with disrespectful and inappropriate behaviors. Let's see the most disrespectful moments by these unmannered defendants. Number 5. Tobias Roman Tobias Roman was in court for a separate charge when his mouth landed him in even more trouble. Roman, already facing several felonies in connection with allegedly stalking a woman at Valley Plaza Mall, is now also charged with threatening a Kern County Superior Court judge. Roman told Judge Charles R., I'm going to slay you when I see you, during his arraignment. The 27-year-old Fresno man had acted strangely from the beginning of his court appearance. He refused to stand up when the judge called his name because he said his foot hurt, the transcript said. The judge then asked Roman his name. Roman responded with, Tobias, my first name, that's it, Giggles or Tobias, that's it, don't call me nothing else. As Bramer began listing the charges against him, Roman said the accusations were lies. Bramer told Roman he needed to be quiet during the proceedings. Instead of heeding the judge's warning, Roman decided to respond and says, yeah, you need to be quiet. Bramer then warned that one more outburst would result in Roman being removed from the courtroom. Roman, however, continued to talk and the judge ordered him taken away. It was as he was leaving the courtroom that Roman threatened Bramer. Judge Bramer immediately noted for the record that Roman had just threatened his life and asked that law enforcement take appropriate measures. Bramer then finished the arraignment and recused himself from the case. In his earlier arrest, the reason for which he was in court, Roman was accused of stalking and threatening an employee of a kiosk at Valley Plaza, Bakersfield police reported. The victim told police Roman tried to rob her. Roman threatened to take the life of the victim and walked by the kiosk three or four times over several hours, the final time pointing a knife at her, the victim told police. Roman was charged with attempted robbery, two counts of making terroristic threats, exhibiting a fatal weapon other than a gun, and stalking. A doctor had been assigned to perform a psychiatric evaluation on Roman for the next court appearance. Bail was apparently set at a combined $182,500 for both cases. Guess Giggles won't be giggling anytime soon. Number 4. Isaiah Gardenhire Next up on our list of the most disrespectful defendants, we really have a monster rather than a person, Isaiah Gardenhire. Isaiah Gardenhire was sentenced to serve 75 to 120 years in prison for, among other horrific acts, physically attacking and taking the life of 13-year-old Adri Dembowski during a two-day crime spree that put the whole community in lockdown. The victim's mother, who was then seven months pregnant, described to the court how Gardenhire first broke into her home and brutally attacked her. She said he forced her to stay quiet by threatening to take the life of one of her younger daughters. The defendant talked about committing gruesome acts on her and her daughters. Per Adri's mother, when she was eventually able to escape from Gardenhire, she ran outside and yelled for help while he gave chase. Gardenhire had reportedly fled and broken into the home of a male and female who lived nearby, physically attacking the female and stealing their car to escape. When Judge Sarah, in an online arraignment, read the charges against him, he appears to take a nap, nodding off like he's bored and taking long and exaggerated yawns. After another audible yawn, the prosecutor continues reading the charges, but Gardenhire interrupts and says that his girlfriend should be charged with the passing of the girl, not him. The judge warns him that if he speaks out in the middle again, he will be muted and tells him to behave in an appropriate manner, saying that he is acting out. When Gardenhire refuses to comply, he is muted. When he returns, it appears he is even more bored than before. As the judge continues reading out his sentence, he flips her the bird with both hands and starts laughing. The hearing was cut short due to his behavior. Isabella County Circuit Judge Mark H. Duthie reportedly said the case was the worst he had seen in his 37 years as a judge and prosecutor. Based on the sentence, Gardenhauer will not be eligible for parole until he is 116 years old. Number 3. Michael Madison Michael Madison, the man who smiled at the father of the girl whose life he brutally took, a man with no remorse for the terrible acts he committed all his life. Disrespectful is not a severe enough way to explain Madison's behavior in court. He was downright disgusting. He was in the courtroom for the charges and Nancy McDonnell, the Ohio County judge who would decide whether Madison deserved to be fatally hurt for his crimes, was about to make a decision. The father of the victim, Van Terry, was making a statement when he looked at the defendant. Madison smiled. Terry snapped. In an instant, the grieving father was flying across the room, diving over a wooden table, his arms outstretched towards Madison's neck, minutes after the judge sentenced Madison to his end in the passings of his daughter and two other women. No, 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 pleaded someone in the courtroom as panic alarms went off. Sheriff's deputy stopped Terry before he could reach his target, restraining the distraught dad and telling him to calm down before he ended up in irons himself. All the while, Madison kept grinning. If the heart-wrenching courtroom scene was unusual, then so too was the gruesome case that brought it about. 
Terry told the news that he was thinking about his daughter when he went after Madison. Prosecutors say Madison mutilated Terry's 18-year-old daughter. The victim's bodies were found near Madison's East Cleveland apartment in 2013. Terry says it's fine if he's charged with going after Madison because he did the right thing. Number 2. Spencer Boston Spencer Boston is the star of the viral video of a young man lighting a joint in the courtroom and smoking it in front of a Wilson County judge. Spencer Boston served 10 days for contempt of court. He made national headlines when he lit that marijuana joint while in court. He was quickly removed by the bailiff, charged with contempt of court and possession, and sentenced to 10 days in jail without bail, but later Boston was released on a $3,000 bond. Boston later on commented on what he did, saying, He didn't want to hear nothing about it, so I did what I planned on doing anyway, and pulled it out and lit it up and addressed the people. When asked what his message was, Boston responded, I said, we the people deserve better. So yes, Boston planned it hoping to highlight the issue of legalizing marijuana, but also said he's surprised by all of the attention. Many people condemn him for showing no respect in the courtroom. Others hailed him a hero for the cause and started raising money to cover his bond. A GoFundMe page entitled Free Spencer Boston quickly raised $7,240 with 458 donors. He was in court for a traffic stop in Lebanon that resulted in citations for speeding and simple possession. Afterward, Boston was also charged with disorderly conduct and simple possession. Number 1. Danta Wright A Washtenaw County judge wiped the smile off this disrespectful man's face during his sentencing in the shooting slaying of an Ann Arbor High School student. After seeing 17-year-old Danta Wright grin while the mother of slain Pioneer High School student Jordan Klee wept, Washtenaw County Trial Court Judge David S. Swartz gave prosecutors time to reconsider their plea and sentence agreement for 25 to 52 years in prison. The judge said, watching you sit there, smile and laugh and shake your head like this was no big deal, I'm very tempted to just say I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. Wright had smiled and shaken his head, seemingly encouraged by a loved one in the courtroom, as Clee's grandfather, weeping mother Karen Clee, and her cousin addressed him with victim impact statements. They recalled the pioneer high school students' love of sports, the prom and holidays he'll miss, and the grief they felt. When Wright had a chance to address the court himself, he said he simply wanted his plea and sentence agreement and he'd be home soon. David Goldstein, Wright's attorney, told Swartz his client wanted him to apologize on his behalf and attributed the smiles to fear, his age, and behavioral problems. Following the hearing, Wright's mother said she believes her son is innocent of Clee's passing and that his mental health concerns weren't taken into account. Wright and two of his accomplices were accused of attempting to steal controlled substances and other items and Wright was since admitted to shooting Clee while attempting to rob him. Despite everything, the family wanted Swartz to sentence Wright through the agreement so they can move on and attempt to forgive Wright. Swartz sentenced Wright to 23 to 50 years in prison for armed robbery, conspiracy to commit armed robbery, and a second degree. Wright will also serve two years in prison for a charge of felony firearm. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you another time.